Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our first edition of League Football Action. During tonight's program, 90 minutes of football action, during which we'll be featuring three games from today's South Australian National Football League matches and a quarter of the best of VFL action from the round played over there. First round matches in three states today, here in Adelaide, in Melbourne, and of course in Western Australia. And that will be the format of the program throughout the 1984 season. We look forward to your company. We'll be featuring uh, more football action than there'll be talk, although there will be post-match interviews, and each Saturday night, Daryl Hicks will be with us to discuss the day's round. Without further ado, let's go into today's final round scores. This was the four games. These were the four games played today. Sturt played Norwood at Football Park. Sturt won that match by 25 points. Sturt 23 goals, 7, 145 to Norwood, 18 goals, 12, 120. And that was a very entertaining game. At Alberton, Port Adelaide, 19 goals, 14, 128. Defeated uh, South Adelaide 15 7 97. The margin there was 31 points, but we're out of order a little bit. There we see the score from Port Adelaide and South Adelaide. Port winning that match by 31 points. Glenelg played Central at the Bay, as I mentioned, and uh, Central's caused something of an upset there. 13 12 Central's defeated Glenelg 12 15. The margin of three points in uh, favour of Central District. And uh, Torrens and Woodville, perhaps the upset of the round. Woodville, 26 goals, 16, 172, defeated West Torrens, 14 goals, 12, 96. A very convincing 76-point margin to Woodville. Well, in tonight's program, we'll be featuring highlights from three games, as I've already mentioned. They'll be the games that were played at Alberton, at Glenelg, and the first game we're going to look at is the match that was played at uh, Football Park. It was a most entertaining game between Sturt and Norwood. Norwood, of course, finished third in the competition last year. Their pre-season form hadn't been all that convincing. They'd been consistent, perhaps consistently unlucky, when remembered that uh, they lost their last two Escort Cup games by very narrow margins. But Sturt went out to football park, smarting from the fact that they'd... Uh, lost that grand final last year and they will obviously be a very determined team this year to make amends for that loss. It was a very entertaining game as I said. We're going to pick up the action early in the first quarter. With me in the commentary position is Daryl Hicks. Sturt looking a little bit dangerous now. They've got a player loose. That was Spiel. Arriving late was McIntosh. He was able to spoil Spiel but the ball's still going forward for Sturt. Knocked on cleverly as it goes by Painter as it goes down towards full forward and Davies again and he's done it again. Noble's got his hand full already. Two strong marks in about 30 seconds. Could this be goal number two? But Davies well on his way to 150. Well, there's a fair bit of Rick Davies, and as fullbacks found last season, he's a very difficult man to get around. He's a very difficult man to move. And uh, Noble is finding that out in the opening quarter here at Football Park. Davies from 15 metres. Kicks truly. That's his second. But Sturt's fourth. They're four goals straight, 24 points. Norwood to one goal straight, six points. Sturt looking a little bit dangerous now. They've got a player loose. That was Spiel. Arriving late was McIntosh. He was able to spoil Spiel, but the ball's still going forward for Sturt. Knocked on cleverly as it goes by Painter as it goes down towards full forward and Davies again, and he's done it again. Noble's got his hand full already. Two strong marks in about 30 seconds. Could this be goal number two? But Davies well on his way to 150. Well, there's a fair bit of Rick Davies, and as fullbacks found last season, he's a very difficult man to get around. He's a very difficult man to move. And uh, Noble is finding that out in the opening quarter here at Football Park. Davies from 15 metres. Kicks truly. That's his second. But Sturt's fourth. They're four goals straight, 24 points. Norwood to one goal straight, six points. Norwood kicking with the breeze in this, the first quarter here at Football Park, but they're trailing badly. Four goals straight, Sturt. Norwood at one goal as the ball goes towards the half-back line for Sturt, and it's Fry who will bring it around the members' wing. The ball going to land in no-man's land. The bounce will uh, be a telling factor here. It comes down to Painter. Clever football by Painter, and he finds a player running loose through the centre of the ground. That was Barbary who goes long, looking for Motley. A beautifully weighted kick from Barbary from almost in the centre circle, and he picked out Motley in the forward pocket, and now Motley from 20 metres out has an opportunity to extend Sturt's lead. Sturt giving their key forwards, Motley and Davies, every opportunity to outmark their opponents. They're the only two players down in the scoring area. There goes the kick from Motley, there's no doubt about that either. Sturt five goals straight, Norwood one goal straight. Sturt's ascendancy now clearly evident on the scoreboard. They lead by 24 points and we're only at the 16 minute mark of the first quarter here at Football Park. As Ooh, Jenkins almost has his head pulled off. Terrible tackle. 
And the free kick will go the way of Jenkins. He's got Fisher streaming through the centre of the ground. A beautiful hand pass accommodates Menzel. Now Aish is on the break, and Aish from 45 metres out can shoot towards goal. That's a pretty good effort if it clears the pack. I think it has. Yes, it has. A goal to Michael Aish and a badly needed goal to Norwood. And that's the best passage of football that Norwood's put together so far in this quarter. Norwood struggling to gain possession, did so when Brendan Howard infringed and then the running Michael Aish, perfection once again, ran full face of goal for the perfect running goal. He's got no one to give it to, eventually it goes to Barbary. Barbary is able to scramble it across towards Ford and Sturt will go forward with purpose again. Oh, they should have done better than that. That's a, an ill-directed kick to say the least from Ford. And as a result, it's Norwood who will break it up. This is Scanlon. He's almost up on left centre wing. Forced to use the left boot. Winter coming across with Downs. This will be an interesting one out battle and Winter should get a free kick. Downs, a very high leaper as we've seen a couple of times in this game, but that was a rather reckless leap. No stage, did he judge it? Yes, we'll keep an eye on the runner and see if Coach Halbert sends the runner out to Andrew Downs. Winters kick is down towards full forward and Roberts drifting in in front of the pack has taken the mark and would have received the free kick had he spilled it because he was pulled around the head. And now Roberts has the opportunity to kick his second goal in this quarter for Norwood from about 25 metres out and on a 45 degree angle. And there goes the runner, Malcolm Greenslade. He'll be going out to talk to Andrew Downs for infringing and for Sturt players being loose in defence. This will be another valuable goal if Roberts converts, as Darrell Hicks has ind indicated earlier in this commentary. He doesn't miss too often. Norwood go to four goals, five Sturt, seven goals straight. Norwood are trying to come back at Sturt in the first half of this second quarter. They trail by 13 points and an opportunity for them to go forward again. Aish and Howard exchanging hand passes and eventually it's uh, not Howard, it's Thomas who kicks towards full forward and he's found Winter. Now yep. this is a chance now for Norwood to get to closer than they've got at uh, any earlier stage in this match. The distance, the margin at quarter time was 20 points. It's 13 at the moment and Winter's kick truly so it's now down to seven points, the margin, and Norwood are making some impression in, on Sturt on the scoreboard. Spiel being opposed again by Hein. Those two men have done most of the ruck work for their respective teams this afternoon, and it'll, it'll be Sturt who'll get the free kick through Whittlesey, who is ridden into the ground, and he'll take this kick just two or three metres the defensive side of the centre circle. Whittlesey going straight down the centre of the ground. He's looking for his centre half forward. That player was out of position. A chance here for Teal. He was unable to take it. A Norwood player held when not in possession. That's Scanlon and Scanlon will get the free kick midway between full, the full-back and half-back lines for Norwood. He's going right across to the other side of the ground. He's got hind loose out there. The kick wasn't a good one. It had to be a good one if they were going to get away with it, although luck has favoured them. It's picked up by Jarvis. Infield to Morano. Morano avoids the tackle that was about to have been applied by Spiel, and now Norwood can move forward. This is Thomas. Back it goes to Morano. Morano from uh, just the defensive side of centre-half forward, and Winter driving across the turf has taken a very clever mark 30 metres out from goal and directly in front and now Norwood is starting to look a lot better up forward. Beautiful play from Norwood then. It's almost as if Neil, May Neil Baum gave them the shaft at quarter time. They're now controlling the ball against the breeze. There goes the kick from Winter. He's kicked truly again his second in as many minutes and Norwood are really back in this game now. Six goals, five to Sturt, seven goals straight. That's a perfect fast pass that found Bruce Winter on the diving mark. Norwood looking good, controlling the ball ahead of centre, and that's their second goal in, or well, their third goal in three minutes. Spiel and Hein. It was Hein who got the ball to the side of the pack, and Thomas. He knocked it further afield, and eventually it comes to Morano. His kick has been smothered by Frost. Frost and Menzel collide heavily. The ball running free, midway between right half forward and uh, right full forward for Norwood. But uh, Downs will relieve the pressure for Sturt, but he kicks it straight to Aish. Well, that wasn't very intelligent football by Downs. He had plenty of time to have a look, and he's under a little bit of pressure in that full back line at the moment. Aisha's kick is good. He's found Michael Laney. Plays on with a hand pass to Morano. Morano's 35 metres out and closing. He's missed, but Roberts will mark in the pocket. The mark has been awarded. Well, Morano will probably tell us that uh, he was looking for Roberts on that occasion. I doubt that he was. He was only about 35 metres from goal and bearing down on the goal but Roberts just drifting across into the pocket positioning himself uh, behind his immediate opponent in Heinrich Roberts 10 metres out 
Has he put Norwood in front? He has. They hit the front for the first time in this match, Norwood. Sturt seven goals straight, 42. Norwood seven goals, five, 47. It's Pike. He's the defensive side of the centre line. He'll go for distance and he can kick the ball. That's gone up towards centre half forward. Pack into the air. Painter claiming the mark and it's been allowed. Good decision, umpire. John Painter touched the ball first and last and he's within scoring distance and he is an immaculate kick. Well, Motley was uh, offering a lead in the pocket. Painter has chosen to ignore that so he's applied a little bit of, a pressure, of pressure to himself here. He's 40 metres out directly in front. Motley was only about 15 metres out. There goes the kick from Painter. And he's justified his decision not to pass the ball to Motley. And Sturt are back in front. They move to eight goals, one 49. Norwood, seven, five, 47. McKechnie and Hine. Hine winning the tap again. This time Norwood have a chance to go forward. Aish getting the ball out wide towards Murano. He's got a lot of room in which to move, but his kick's not a good one. Oh, Downs misses a simple mark at full back for Sturt. Will he get out of trouble? He'll be lucky if he does. Heinrich's there to lend support. This is Fry. Fry went to bounce it, then found that he couldn't. Now he's bounced it once before picking out a teammate in Craig. Craig is at right half forward. His hand pass was unnecessary, although Sturt will probably get out of trouble again. They run the ball in towards full forward. Now they've lost possession. The umpire's whistle has gone. No, it hasn't. Play allowed to go on. Whittlesey, who was, was the player who made the error at the crucial stage, comes to Davies. Across it goes towards Hollis. He ducked into the tackle. Play allowed to go on, and Painter hooks it. Goal. That's pretty close. No, I think that's... Great special. goal, John Painter. Beautiful play, John Painter. Well, we saw Sturt under all sorts of pressure then, looking like losing possession. I thought Whittlesey threw the ball, but through Davies, and then eventually Painter, it was a perfect left foot snap. Painter's now kicked his fourth, third goal. Bounce down taking place where, Mark, where it was ruled that uh, Jarvis picked it up on the half volley. McIntosh is pushed in the back, and he'll get the free kick almost in the centre circle. McIntosh down towards half forward. Roberts is in front and with superior judgment over Heinrich. He'll have the ball taken off him now. No, he won't. Play on is the call as Roberts spears the ball in towards full forward and Aish. Oh, my word, an interesting incident behind the plan. It's on in the goal square now. 18 is Maynard. 36 uh, for Sturt is Downs. The umpires moved in very quickly, but that resulted from the incident immediately after Roberts took the mark. He pushed Heinrich in the face and was then allowed to play on. And that upset players further down the ground. Aish took the mark in the goal square and is, uh, is also getting a 15 metre penalty, which will take him onto the goal line. So this should certainly produce Norwood's eighth goal. Eight goals, five. Norwood Sturt, nine goals, one. Let's see where the leads are coming from. Filkey has been told to move to give Davies room. The kick going in high, looking for Davies. Davies in the centre of the pack has taken the mark. The big man in the middle, in between Neil Hine and Malcolm Noble, has read the ball perfectly, taken the clean, strong mark. Seven points the difference here at the moment at Football Park. Almost 17 minutes played in the third quarter. And Davies has the opportunity to increase Sturt's lead. He's 30 metres out from goal. He's on a 45 degree angle. He's kicked only two goals so far in the match. And I think he's missed this one too. We'll have to wait on the goal and find. No, he hasn't. He's got his third. And Sturt increased their lead. They moved to 13 goals for. That's good, accurate kicking. Norwood 10-9. As the ball came into Davies, he positions himself beautifully to take the clean mark. And then that perfect kicking action for goals against the breeze registered the full score. McKechnie winning another good knock uh, opposed to Michael Aney, but it's picked up by Jarvis. This is Aish, down towards the centre wing position, looking for Murano. He's tripped and pulled off the ball, and we'll get no, he won't get the free kick as it comes to Painter eventually. Painter's hand pass accommodates a teammate who wanted to go without it, then runs into Moskenny, is then well tackled by Aish and loses possession. Sturt didn't do that particularly well. It's now with Thomas, who gets the ball infield towards Jenkins, and from uh, almost in the centre of the ground, Jenkins drives Norwood into attack. It's at centre half forward. Well read off hands down there by Pake, who gets it to Fry. Fry in turn gets the hand pass across the top of the pack towards Hollis. He's having trouble picking it up, but he's been beautifully shepherded by Pake. Look where Pake is now. He's come from the full back oh. line and spears the pass into Motley. And that was brilliant running football by Pake to set up their scoring opportunity for Sturt. That's Timmy Pake at his best. 
suffered from the hamstring problem last year, kept him out of the grand final. He overlapped from the full-back position, through half-back, through centre wing, and now he finds Peter Motley. Motley is about 35 to 40 metres out from goal on a 45-degree angle. His kick is offline. No, it's not. It's marked by Davies, who tries to play on and has been tackled and will be penalised for holding the ball. And so the comedy of errors. The crowd loved to see Rick Davies caught. Unfortunate, played on well then after a strong mark. Well, that was a good tackle by Scanlon. He was giving away inches, both in height and uh, around the midriff, as far as his opponent was concerned, but he tackled him with great gusto and with great effect, and Nord were able to get out of trouble, but the pressure's being reapplied here as the ball goes down. Oh, brilliant mark by Jenkins. Gutsy stuff. My word, it was certainly Craig who had the best position, but Jenkins hurled himself into the air, and he's taken a fine telling mark on the outer side of the ground for Norwood. He relieves the pressure, the kick going back towards uh, centre wing where Fry takes a good mark. It's called play on, apparently it was touched. The hand pass goes wide uh, towards Painter. Painter from left centre wing, kicks down towards the half forward line where Jenkins is pushed in the back and he'll get the free kick. What a gutsy player that Danny Jenkins, the captain of Norwood is. Terrific example for his players. And Norwood moving the ball forward again. This is Menzel, if he can get control of the football, he has and he's left a trail of players in his wake. From Ace it goes to McIntosh and now to Thomas. They're four of the best ball handlers you'll find in football. And Thomas has driven towards goal and in fact has converted. That's great football by Norwood with the goal eventually being uh, credited to Thomas. But there are numerous players involved in that exchange and that brings Norwood just a bit closer. Norwood 12-9, Sturt 14-5. The ball coming to the side of the pack and Dickinson. On it goes to Menzel. He couldn't handle the ball cleanly, which has cost him dearly. The hand pass coming back infield. This is Dickinson again. Down towards full forward. Heiner's down there. He's being opposed by Downs. And Heiner's taken the mark on the point of the square. So now Norwood, who have struggled to stay in touch with Sturt. Eight points is the closest they've got during the course of this, the third quarter. At the 28-minute mark, can get to within two points. And Hein has done just that for them. Norwood moved to 13-9. They're 87. Sturt 14-5, 89. McKechnie has taken the mark. He plays on quickly to Craig. Craig in towards full forward. A chance here for Sturt. Davies in the middle of the pack has taken the mark. Once again, Rick Davies outmarking both Neil Hine and Malcolm Noble. That's twice that he's done that in the third or fourth quarter. Davies from 15 metres out, directly in front, lines up for his fourth, and he's got it. So Sturt stretched their lead to seven points, one and a half minutes into the last quarter. It's been a good game so far, and certainly the closeness of the scores has maintained interest as Craig gets a kick down towards full forward. This is Filkey in front, being opposed by Scanlon, and Filkey will get the free kick. He used his body well, he was frustrating Scanlon, and he can stretch Sturt's lead from 25 to 30 metres out and almost directly in front. Craig Filkey posted the first six-pointer for Sturt in the third quarter when he came on, now has his chance for the second. So two goals in the opening minutes of this last quarter by Sturt has given them some valuable breathing space. They now move to 16-6, Norwood 13-10. Beautiful kick in by Fry on that occasion found Craig. Craig down in the direction of Whittlesey. It comes towards Motley. Motley in the right full forward pocket, 35 metres out. The goal umpire hasn't moved. Oh my word, what a magnificent transference of play by Sturt to bring up their 17th goal, their 17-6, 108, Norwood 13-11-89, and Sturt have taken a stranglehold on this, goal, this game in the opening minutes of the last quarter. Once again, we see Sturt's ability to take the ball from full back to full forward, and on that occasion, it was Peter Motley, just too mobile, too fast for Jim Teal, as again, in the third quarter, he got on top with mobility, and that was a beautiful running goal to Motley. Davies coming out is going to oppose Hine. Lester Ross coming on for Norwood. Trevor Mott Morano coming off. This is Menzel. With him is Filkey. Barbary. Cross to Moskenny. He's feigned the hand pass two, three times before eventually deciding to kick. Motley couldn't take the mark. It spills free to Whittlesey. He draws a player, gives the hand pass to Howard. And I'd say that has sealed Norwood's fate. That's the fourth goal in the first eight minutes of the final quarter to Sturt. They've played brilliant flowing football during this period. And they now move to 19 goals six. Norwood at 13 goals 11. 
And that passage of play brought to an end some spirited opposition from Norwood in what was a most entertaining game, as you can see as you look at the quarter-by-quarter quarter scores. At quarter time, Sturt's accurate kicking had them in front by 20 points. At uh, half time, Norwood had got to within seven points, and at three-quarter time, they'd reduced the leeway to just a solitary point. But then Sturt kicked, as we saw in the opening minutes of the last quarter, and although Norwood fought back in the dying stages of the match, Sturt went on to win 23-7, 145. That's excellent shooting for goal. Norwood, 18 goals, 12, 120. The eventual margin was 25 points in favour of Sturt. So a good opening to the season as far as Sturt was concerned.